This lecture is presented by John Moffat of Open Tuition. For other free lectures, visit opentuition.com. Okay, we're going through the um, June 2015 paper F5 exam. Um, we're in the middle of section B, and I'm going to now go through question three. Look at the requirements, part A. Calculate the labour efficiency planning variance and the labour efficiency operational variance after taking account of the learning effect. So it looks frightening for a moment. Um, uh, there's obviously variances involved, efficiency planning and the efficiency operational, and learning. However, it's five marks, so the exam is not that nasty. Uh, maybe it's not as frightening as it looks. Part B, discuss the likely consequences arising from production managers' failure to take into account the learning effect. Five marks. I'll go through both bits, but as I was stressing, I think it was with question one, don't, don't fall into the trap of spending all the time just on part A, because even if you get part A 100% correct, you're only getting half marks. Uh, in the middle of an exam, inevitably, however good you are, something's going to go wrong and you risk failing the question. Whereas part B, you know, I'll do the parts in order. But even with part B, even if you'd done nothing for part A, you could still have got high marks on part B. Again, not enough to pass. You've got to do something from both bits. But, you know, make sure you have done something for both bits. You must. All right. Let's start going through, if I can get the mouse working. There we are. Uh, Botco is a manufacturing company. It's a small permanent workforce, but it's also reliant on temporary workers. who it hours on three-month contracts whenever require a production requirements increase. All buying of materials is responsible to the purchasing department. Uh, the policy is to hold up low levels of raw materials to minimise inventory holding costs. They use cost plus pricing to set the selling prices for its products once they've drawn up an initial cost card. So they do a cost card, they add on a percent to cost to get the selling price. Prices are then reviewed on a quarterly basis. Detailed variance reports are produced each month for sales, material costs, labour costs. Departmental managers are then paid a monthly bonus depending on the performance of their department. One month ago, they began producing a new product. The standard cost card for one unit was drawn up to include a cost of $84 for labour based on, so the original standard cost it was based on seven hours of labor at $12 per hour. The actual output during the first month of production was 460 units. And the actual time taken um, was 860 hours at a cost of 26,040. Now, if you remember, when we read part A, we're looking at efficiency variances. And for efficiency, it's a question of did they work did they actually work faster or slower than we expected? And out of interest, for 460 units, that's seven hours each, they should have taken 3,220 hours. 460 units should have been seven hours each, 3,220 hours. They only took 1,860 hours. And so they have been remarkably efficient. They've gone a lot faster than they expected. However, last paragraph, after being presented with some initial variance calculations, the production manager has realised the standard time of seven hours was the time to produce the first unit 
and that a learning rate of 90% should have been anticipated for the first thousand units of production. He's cons consequently been criticised by other department managers who said that uh, he's no idea at all of the problems this has caused. Now, I'll worry about the problems it's caused after, but of course they've gone a lot faster. You know, it, 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 seven hours a unit, this should have taken three to 20 hours and they've only taken 1860. But they'd ignore the learning effect. Because of this learning effect, you wouldn't have expected them anyway to have taken seven hours for every unit, seven hours for the first unit, but then faster and faster and faster and faster. You'd have expected it anyway to have been a lot less than 3220. And so, simply saying, <coughs> overall they've been a lot faster, great, but you would have expected them to have been faster. We should have changed the budget, we should have revised the budget, we should have taken into account the learning effect and said, how many hours would you have expected them to take? And the difference between our original 3220 and what we should have had would have been the planning variance. The difference between what it should have been, taking into account learning, uh, and the actual of 1860 would have been the operational variance. So what we need to do is calculate how many hours should they have taken? For the 460 units, how many hours should it have taken if we budgeted properly and taken account of the learning? Well, this is our learning bit, that the average time per unit using the formula is AX to the power B. Uh, the time for the first unit, which was seven, if you remember, times X, the number of units, 460, to the power B minus 0 0.1520. And so per unit, we should have budgeted on taking, and this is calculator work, if you're unsure with your calculator, Go back and watch the lecture and practice. But 460 to the power 0 0.1520 negative equals this bit I get to be 0 0.39378. I won't write it down. We'll multiply by 7. And each unit should take 2.756505 hours. Now, before anybody uh, starts worrying about rounding, bits of rounding don't matter at all, but I'll keep it in my calculator because what I need to know is how long in total should 460 units have taken. And so the total time, if it's 2.7 hours on average per unit, total time should have been 460 times that. So if I multiply by 460, it should have been, and now I will round it, because I get 1267.99. I'm not going to mess around with 0.99. It's 1268 hours. So that's what it should have been, the time for those 460 units. Uh, and so that's the, the revised budget. That's the total hours we should have budgeted on. And now our variances are going to be very quick. Uh, they want the efficiency variances. So first of all, the planning. Uh, the planning variance is the difference between the original budget hours. And how many did we originally budget on? Three to twenty hours minus the revised budget hours. Well, we just worked out it should have only taken one to six eight hours. So in hours, we've been a lot faster, and we should cost it out at the standard cost per hour, which is twelve dollars. 
So I get a priming efficiency variance of 23184. And it's favourable. Uh, being a lot quicker would have given us more profit uh, than we were originally budgeting. Now we can look at the operational. Well, we now know we should have taken 1268. But in our operations, did we actually take longer or did we take uh, less? So we compare the revised hours. We should have taken 1268 with the actual hours. And how many actual hours were there? 1860. So here, we're not doing as well, clearly. We've taken a long, lot longer than we really should have done. Uh, cost out at standard cost of $12 an hour. I get 7104. And because they took longer, that would be less profit um, adverse. And so there is um, I've just realised, I'm sorry. I got my arithmetic wrong, which is annoying. 3220 minus 1268 at twelve dollars. I'm sorry that came to twenty three four two four. I do apologize. Anyway, there we are, there's part A. Uh, incidentally, that mistake I just made is what I was referring to earlier in one of the previous questions. You must show your workings neatly. The marks are for workings. Uh, the fact that all my workings are correct and it's obvious what I'm trying to do. Um, if I'd lost anything at all for that little mistake, at most it would have been half a mark. If my workings weren't clear and I'd got the wrong answer, then I risk losing. Well, since there were two, if just for that one, I risk losing two and a half marks. Anyway, now let's look at part B. And I did say earlier that in fact, although most people, including myself, would do part A first, you don't actually need uh, an answer to part A to be able to do part B. Discuss the likely consequences arising from the failure to take into account of the learning effect. Now, again, I'm not going to write an answer out in full. You must read the um, examiner's answer. And remember, she writes more than uh, she expects. You'll write. But there are a few points which should have been Pretty obvious. To get full marks is hard, but to get some marks is actually quite easy. That first paragraph of the question, there's a lot of information which so far has been completely irrelevant. You know, it was a danger wasting too much time earlier on reading it. We didn't need that first paragraph. But a couple of things there that are relevant for part B. The fourth line of the first paragraph says, they use cost plus pricing to set the selling price. Now, when they did their costings, they were assuming each unit would take seven hours and therefore labor would be 84. And they brought that 84 into our costings and added on a profit to get a price. Whereas in fact, Overall, each unit should only have taken 2.7 hours. And if they'd have done the cost card with 2.7 hours at $12 an hour, they'd have got a much lower cost, much lower. And therefore, they could have afforded to have charged a lower selling price. And if they'd have charged a lower selling price, potentially, they could have sold a lot more units. And so there's a, 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 a one problem that um, original cost too high 
Therefore, selling price could be lower. And of course, if the selling price is lower, maybe we could sell more units. Now, don't write it in the exam like I'm doing. You know, try and write sentences. Uh, I just don't want to waste time here. But there's one potential problem that they're charging an unrealistic selling price. Look back at our first paragraph again. Um, we have a small permanent workforce, but we also rely on temporary workers who eat hires on three month contracts. Well, think about it. We budgeted on taking seven hours a unit. We budgeted on taking 3,220 hours, wherever it was. I think it was 3,220, but I've lost, there it was, 3,220. If we budgeted properly, we should have only taken one, two, six, eight hours. Well, because we were taking, three, we thought we'd take 3,000 hours, it's quite likely that we, we'd hired temporary workers and they've got to be there for three uh, three months. It's a three month contract. And it turns out we wouldn't have needed them all. And so there's a second problem that we've probably hired temporary workers that are not needed. And of course, that means we're spending money and these people are idle. Um, they sat around because we don't need that many uh, workers. Uh, what else, what else? Uh, variances. Overall, we were a lot faster than original budget. We thought we'd take 3 to 20 hours. We only took 18 60. And so if somebody hadn't noticed, we'd have said, oh, the production manager's done really well. He's so much faster than we expected. You know, big positive variance, give him a bonus. It turns out that's not the case at all. It was because he got the original budget wrong. And in fact, had he got it right, operationally, we didn't do as well at all, perhaps because of the temporary workers. So it, it, it does mean that the original variances would be misleading. <coughs> uh, look at the uh, end of the first paragraph. Departmental managers are paid a monthly bonus depending on the performance of their department. Well, if somebody hadn't spotted it, production manager would have ended up with a wonderful bonus and, in a sense, didn't deserve it. Whereas other managers, such as the sales manager, maybe we could have sold an awful lot more had we charged a lower price, but we didn't. And, you know, therefore he wouldn't have got his bonus. Now, as I said before, I mean, I'm not saying that's a complete answer, but that would certainly would have got most of the five marks if you'd written it neatly. Uh, but do have a read of the examiner's own answer. 